Hey Yolanda, are you there? Because you and I need to have a serious talk. I mean, did you really expect me to eat that trash you packed for my lunch? Especially after how awful last night's dinner was? How about you try putting in even a modicum of effort when you cook next time, huh? Excuse me? Are you serious, Eric? How about you thank me for even packing your lunch for you? Honestly, if you're just going to be like this, then you can just buy your lunch from the office. Because I am not going to get up extra early to cook for you if you're going to be like this. Oh, please. You might have a point if your cooking was even worth the effort you put into it. Today's is just especially bad. What is even the point of packing my lunch if you're just feeling it with a bunch of reheated crap from the freezer? The least that you can do is try to add a little variety in there. Don't you think? Eric, you were the one who set our budget for groceries. I'm only working with the parameters that you've set for me. But as long as we're on this subject, how about we talk about your drinking? Don't you think that you're spending just a bit too much there? And what's wrong if I want to use the money I earn from my job on a drink now and then? Because it isn't now and then, and you know that we are barely making it with the budget that we have now. We really have to be careful about where we're spending our money. We've talked about this. So you're really gonna tell me, the only one of us with a real job, that I need to cut back on my spending? I'm just saying that I think you have a tendency to overspend when you go out is all. I really can't believe that you're coming after me after all the work I've done for this family. Am I seriously not even allowed to indulge myself now and then? Of course you are. I'm not trying to tell you that you aren't allowed to relax now and then. I'm just asking that you're a bit more conscious of your spending is all. You're making such a big deal out of this. There's no way that I'm even spending that much. Why are you doing this right now? Look, Eric, I am just telling you that at this rate, we aren't able to put enough aside to be able to save up money. I mean, what are we going to do if there's some kind of emergency or something like that? If living within our budget is really that difficult for you, then we'll just have to find a way to bring in more money. I'll have you know that my job gives me a raise every single year. Are you really telling me that that isn't enough? Well, maybe I could just ask your mom if she wouldn't mind if I went out and found at least a part-time job so I could contribute a little. And if I did that, then I could buy nice food to pack for your lunches. No, that isn't going to happen. I know my mom would rather have you at home. After all, we haven't even been married a year. You can just go out and find a job so suddenly. Okay then, if you really don't want me to have a job, then I need you to cooperate with me on this a little more, okay? Because I'm doing all I can at home to make sure that we're within our budget. I haven't even bought any clothes for myself in six months. And just why on earth would a housewife like you even need new clothes, huh? Who are you planning to dress up for? I'm not dressing up for anyone, but I am saying that if I don't need new clothes, then maybe you don't either. Surely you'd be fine with the suit that you always wear to work, right? Well then, what am I supposed to wear on my days off then, huh? Well, it isn't like you have no clothes right now. You could just wear what you have, right? Wait a second. I see what's going on here. You keep going on and on about how we're supposed to be saving money. But really, you just don't want me to be buying anything for myself. Isn't that right? Of course not. I'm saying that we both have to make sure that we're doing our best to stay within our budget. And you know how grateful I am for all the work you do to support us all. Well, if you were really grateful, then you would try even harder to cut down on the budget at home. Because the way you're talking, you're making it sound like I'm going around buying fur coats for myself. Maybe you should check yourself before pointing the finger at others. But I'm already doing everything that I could possibly be doing to try and save money. All I'm asking is that you cut back your spending a little bit. Is that really so much? And I'm telling you that I'm sure that you're not doing enough. For example, do you have the AC on right now? The AC? Well, yes, I, I do have it on, actually. Well, there you go. Turn it off right now. Eric, come on, you can't be serious, right? It's summer and we're in the middle of a heat wave. Do you think people 100 years ago had AC and that they could use it on days like these? Of course not. And yet somehow they survived and managed to get through their days. 
You're just spoiled with all the comforts of home that you get to enjoy while I'm at work. But Eric, the news is always talking about how the heat waves are getting worse and worse every single year. They're all just babies who are too used to having things like AC and heaters. They don't even know how to live in our world anymore. Besides, if it's really that hot, then you would probably have the AC turn out pretty high, don't you? You think that's free? The reason we weren't able to save any money is because of how much you're using appliances like that. Eric, you, you don't really think that, do you? Are you really telling me to stay in the house with no AC? I'm only giving you advice on how to save money, since you're complaining about how you can't think of what else you can do. Besides, you're just a housewife. It's not like you're even doing enough to build up a sweat or anything. Just crack some windows and it'll be fine. Eric, I really think that you're being unreasonable right now. You can't be serious about this. I have had just about enough if you're whining. I've told you what you need to do. Now, do it. Then that is something you can start with. And if that isn't enough, then I'll think of other ways too. But it's so humid outside. Opening the windows is only going to let the humidity get inside the house. Okay then. Keep the windows closed then. Are you really going to complain about all these options I'm giving you? If you really got hot, just go outside and stand inside some store until you cool down. Hey, Eric, can you talk right now? I was just wondering where you are right now. I'm out eating with some friends, if you must know. Well, you have to get back home right now, please. Are you kidding me? Are you really trying to order me around on my day off? I can't believe you sometimes, Yorlanda. No, it's a real emergency. I just got back home from the grocery store and, uh, well, someone has completely removed our AC unit. Did you do this? Ugh, please tell me this wasn't you. Of course it was me. I know you were still using it. So I had to take things into my own hands. Eric, please, it's almost a hundred degrees outside, and if I don't open the windows, then the house becomes a sweat lodge. I just don't get why you think you deserve to have any AC when you don't even have a job. You really ought to be thankful that you have it so easy as a housewife. Please, Eric, it's like you're trying to punish me for something that I didn't even do. Something you didn't do? You broke your promise to me, didn't you? I told you that I didn't want you using it. And you still did. And now you have the nerve to try and order me around while I'm out with my friends? You really are an annoying woman, do you know that? But I was going to make us all dinner. You didn't even tell me that you had plans to go out at all. And I know that if I put these leftovers in your lunchbox that you'll just get upset with me. So it's basically just a waste of food, but I really am trying to do all we can to save money. Good. You should keep doing that. Just quit asking me for help. You're an adult. Figure this out by yourself. Eric, you are going to put our AC unit back in place when you get home, because this is not the way that we should be trying to save money. <laughs> you wish. I had to watch a video on how to even get that thing out there in the first place. I don't know how to put it back, and I know that you certainly don't either. Well, then what are we going to do? You're really just going to keep our house like this? Hmm, I guess that means you'll probably have to call someone to reinstall it, huh? But wait, you can't do that because it'll cost too much money. And we're trying to save, right? <laughs> I don't even know what to say to you right now. I mean, you do realize that you're going to be hot in our house as well, right? Oh, that's fine. I'm really only ever in the house when I sleep or wake up. Otherwise, I'm in my cool office for the rest of it. I can't stand a little heat if it means making sure that you don't get to use the AC at all. Eric, I didn't want to mention this to you, but I've actually been feeling quite ill the past few days. Oh, it's probably just a cold or allergies or something. Maybe some heat will help you, actually. You can just sweat off whatever this is. Please, Eric, I really haven't felt good all day, and it's only getting worse. Man, you're really annoying. I mean, is there any other housewife in the world as needy as you are? You complain about every single little thing. 
And just what does this have to do with me being a housewife, huh? You do realize that I actually have a lot I need to do every day. Oh, please. You just need to pack my lunch and make dinner. Besides that, you probably just sit on the couch all day watching your soap operas. You really think that's all I do? You don't realize that I also clean the house, keep the garden, looking tidy, dust off everything, and much more? Besides, I may be a housewife, but that doesn't make me a maid. You could stand to do more around the house too, you know. Here we go again. You and I have already talked about this, and I have told you the answer is no. Now look. I am trying to enjoy some quality time with the boys, and all this nagging is ruining my mood. So why don't you leave me alone, and go back to all that hard work, cleaning the house that you've been always going on about. Just remember that I warned you not to use the AC and you were the one that disobeyed me. If you're so mad about what I did, you only have yourself to blame. I heard that it's supposed to be well over 100 degrees outside today. How's it going being inside the house with all that? What is the matter with you? Don't you realize what you've done? You really are an idiot. Do you know that? Excuse me? What did you just call me? Just who do you think you're talking to, huh? You really need to learn your place, you know that? You're nothing but a useless housewife who needs to quit acting so up. I don't care how hot it is, you better not be using any kind of power to cool yourself down. Well then why don't you go and tell your office to shut off your AC, huh? Oh, you must think you're really clever coming up with that one, huh? Or are you just trying to get me mad? I'm going to make sure that you don't get to use a single cent on yourself ever again. You idiot. It's because you've been treating your wife like this that she's ended up in the hospital. You really thought that she caught a cold in the middle of a summer like this? She was suffering from heat stroke. Wait, what? What is going on here? Is this not Yolanda? Just who are you? And why are you using my wife's cell phone, huh? Who am I? I'm your boss, Eric. It's me. Zach Henderson. Wait, Zach? I don't understand. What's going on here? Is this supposed to be some kind of joke or something like that? Why are you on my wife's phone? Hold on a second. This whole thing is just ridiculous. Yolanda, I know it's you. You're nothing but a filthy liar, do you know that? It isn't a lie. It's really me, Eric. I'm actually in the house right next to yours because my aunt owns it. Hold on. So, this is all really real? For the last time, yes. It's really real. I happen to come over to my aunt's house for lunch, and I happen to see your wife stumble out of your house. She was covered in sweat, shivering, and looked as if she was about to pass out. You're kidding me. She really looked like that? That's right. And just where are you right now? Because I know you're not at the office right now. If you were, then you would have already found out that I was in the hospital with your wife right now. Right, well, I just... I had some things that I needed to do, and so I stepped out for the day. Well, you should know that it was your wife who asked me to reach out to you and message you on her phone. But I have to say that I'm just shocked at what you yourself admitted to. I mean, how could you remove your own AC unit in your house? Not only that, but your wife told me that she found a hidden fan that you kept when you would go to sleep in the other room. How could you do this to your own wife? You're just awful. No, no wait. You don't understand, Zach. This is just all part of a little spousal spat between us. Nothing else. I really didn't mean to bring you into this. I'm so sorry my wife tried to suck you into this. I am not the one you should be apologizing to right now, Eric. You're right. Please tell my wife how sorry I am that this went this far. By the way, which hospital is she in right now? No. 
Your wife doesn't want you to know where she is or for you to come and visit her. She only asked that I text you for her. Wait, she doesn't want me to visit her? Well then what is it that she wants to say to me? Well, she wants me to let you know that she wants a divorce. Hold on a second. You can't be serious about that, right? I'm afraid that she's very serious. She is sick of living under such a selfish man with so little regard for his own wife's well-being. But, you mean... I'm sorry, Zach. Can you please just let me talk to my wife right now? I know that she's sick and she really doesn't know what she's saying at all. Oh, give me a break. This is all your fault, and you know it. You know, I have friends who live in Alaska, and even up there they have to have their AC on. You're just crazy if you think that humans can survive in a heat like this. You're right, sir. I shouldn't have done this. It was all a mistake. It's no wonder your wife wants to leave you. Wait, boss, please. Can you at least tell me where my wife is right now? Your wife told me that she doesn't want you coming anywhere near here. But you should know that even before I text you, your own mom reached out and asked me if she could come visit. Your wife said it was okay and when your mom got here, she was begging for Yolanda's forgiveness after all that you did. As for you, I want you back in the office now. I will be waiting in meeting room number 4. But what is going on there? Is there a meeting today that I didn't know about? Didn't you hear? The AC is broken in that room. It's the hottest room in the whole office. And now it will be all yours to use. Yolanda, please. Just how long is it going to be until you come back home? Surely you must be feeling better now, right? I said I'm sorry, didn't I? Shouldn't that be enough? You aren't really going to divorce me, are you? Of course we're still getting divorced, but don't worry. I'll come over sometime this week to collect my things. Yolanda, you really actually responded to me. Please. You have to know how sorry I am for everything. I really don't want to hear it, Eric. Just sign the divorce papers and let's get this over with. You're really serious about this, aren't you? You really want to just end it all. Was it really that bad being with me? Of course it was. And now I just don't see any point at all in staying with you for another day. Please don't say that. You have to know that I realized what I did was wrong. Not only that, but my boss has been forcing me to work in the only room in the building without AC. It is literally a sauna. It's got a window that lets sunlight in for almost the entire day. I have to bring a towel to work just so that I don't end up in a complete mess. Well, I am glad that at least it sounds like you're getting a taste of your own medicine. But if you think that's going to change my mind, then you have got another thing coming. At least now you realize what it was that you were putting me through this whole time. I just hope that you know now that you can't treat people the way that you were treating me. You literally destroyed part of your house just to make a petty point. I know, but I just... I didn't think that you were going to have to go to the hospital for this. Have you even been watching the news? This summer is so bad that there's been cases of heat stroke happening all over the city. I'm sorry. I really had no idea. I didn't think it would affect you like that. Well, I complained to you about it again and again, didn't I? And yet you refused to listen to a word I said. You just told me to stay inside the hot house and not use any electricity while you went out to be with your friends. I mean, what kind of husband doesn't let his own wife use the AC? How messed up is that? You really think that I enjoy keeping the house clean and doing all of the cooking? You're only just now starting to understand what you've put me through? I know, but now I do understand. I swear. I mean, it's just so hot. I can barely even concentrate on my work. And I just assumed that you had it easy staying at home all day. I guess I got a little bit jealous over what I was picturing in my head. And now you realize that's it. 
The whole thing was always just in your head, and I never had it as easy as you thought I did. Besides, I wanted to be out there working. I wanted to be helping us earn money, but you were the one who told me that I wasn't allowed to. But I really wanted you to look after my mom. Surely you would have preferred staying at home with her overworking, right? Of course not. I told you over and over again that I wanted to be in an office working. But this is my mom we're talking about. What was I supposed to do about her if you weren't going to be there to look after her? You think that she can't take care of herself? She's not even that old. But if you were really that worried, then you could have let me go to work and hired a nurse or something. You know that we wouldn't be having as many money problems as we are now if you would just let me go out and work like I wanted to in the first place. But no, I was kind enough to hold my tongue for as long as I could and do what you told me to because I thought it would be easier. And you just took that as permission to dump all of the work of taking care of your mom on me. And any time I asked for your help or for you to take my side, you treated me like I was asking for the world. Well, I am not going to let you boss me around anymore. I am the one who knows what's best for me, and I am going to put as much distance as I can between you and your mom. Eric tried to drag the divorce process out for as long as he could, but I already know how to be patient enough to wait him out. Not to mention the fact that he was being seen as liable for my heat stroke. In the end, he knew that he had no other choice but to sign. After the divorce, however, rumors began to fly around his work about what had happened. I heard that he was only able to last a few more months there before all the rumors and whispering drove him to quit his job. Then I heard that Eric began to put all of the blame for his divorce and losing his job on his mom. He said that if she didn't insist I stayed home, that none of this would have happened. As for me, I took the alimony money and used it to move far, far away from Eric and his mom. I found an apartment for myself and have already started at a new job. Maria, it's been a while. Do you know who this is? How did you get my WhatsApp ID? What do you want? Don't be so mad. How have you been? I'm fine. So what do you want? I'm so happy you haven't changed. Short-tempered Maria. <laughs> I wanted you to know that I'm getting married. Oh, congratulations. That's all. Rather a trite reply. I contacted you because I want you to come to my wedding. You're coming, right? Huh, you're inviting me? That's really in poor taste, don't you think? Really? After all, I met my fiancé because of you, Maria. So it's only natural that I want your blessing. Maybe it's just me, but I have no idea what's going on in that head of yours. Really? Haven't you gotten over it already? It's been two years since Kent and you broke up. I am totally over it. It's a part of my past. A terrible, dark part of my past. Well, then that's fine. Can I ask you to make a toast? Is it really fun playing around with others' feelings? You know I'm not an appropriate guest for your wedding. Yes, it's totally fun. Psych! <laughs> I'm not that cruel. FYI, I'm not attending your wedding. So let it go, okay? Are you serious? Of course I am. Why? Oh, I guess it hurts that Kent with high socioeconomic status, dumped you for someone as beautiful, thin, and well-versed as me. High socioeconomic status? <laughs> Kent? Of course. You are aware, Maria, that Kent works for a prestigious company. Oh, that. It doesn't make a difference to me. You don't have to pretend. Between you and me, my life is going to be so glamorous and exciting as super wealthy Kent's wife. 
You must be so happy to have your so glamorous and exciting life. I wonder if it's because I'm so charming. The reason that Kent dumped you, his girlfriend of five years. You're mistaken there. You know I'm the one that ended it with Kent. Oh, that's right. My bad. You ended it with Kent when you realized I was Kent's soulmate, right? Well, Kent hooking up with you is the reason we broke up. But now I'm glad it happened and I'm no longer with Kent. Really? Are you, like, super happy now? Actually, I am, so will you quit bothering me? I'm not bothering you, but a part of me wonders if your so-called happiness is really a big fat lie. It's not like you have a boyfriend or anything. Actually, I'm going to get married too. And unlike you, I would never lie about my happiness. Maria, you're getting married too? Congratulations! What does your fiancé do? And why didn't you tell me you have a boyfriend? There was no way I would want to tell you anything about my personal life on my own. Anyhow, we're both busy right now, so we'll wait until things settle down at work to plan our wedding. Busy? How sad that you and your fiancé have to work to the bone on the whim at your jobs. He works for a multinational trading company. He's busy studying for various certifications. Trading company? Does he have a good salary? Well, it is one of the biggest trading companies in the world. He's really busy because he has to go to many different countries for work. Switzerland, Africa, even Tahiti. Wow, that sounds promising. Just how did you meet such a catch? He's a regular at the cafe I own. We often talked when he came in, and one thing led to another, and... What? Maria, you own a cafe? I didn't know. After Kent and I broke up, I wanted something of my own that no man can take away. I've always loved going to cafes, so I decided to open up my own cafe. Really? And is business good? I'm lucky. My regulars leave me great reviews and often tell their friends, colleagues about the cafe. The cafe's been featured in a couple of magazines, and I've been interviewed for some local TV shows as well. As a result, we're really busy. What the... I mean, it must be a great cafe to be in magazines on TV. Thank you. I'm finally able to open my second cafe. So I'm extremely busy right now. I see. But if you're so busy and making so much money, you don't really need your trading company husband, do you? Why don't you introduce him to me so I can have him? Excuse me? Aren't you going to marry Kent? That was my plan, but when I checked online... Employees of trading companies make way more than Kent. So, it would be better for me to marry someone who works for a trading company. Holly, do you realize how rude that statement is? My bottom line is I want to be rich and go to high society events and parties. If I can find someone higher than Kent's socioeconomic status... I'm going to go after that guy. You really are a selfish brat. And what makes you think I would introduce my own fiancé to someone like you? I can't believe you're even asking me this. Fine. He doesn't have to be your fiancé. It could be one of his colleagues. I mean, as long as their salaries are super high, anyone in his trading company will do. But he can't be an uggo. We need to look good in the pictures. <laughs> Let me make myself clear. I will not introduce a single man to you, Holly. And you contacting me like this really is a nuisance. A nuisance? 
I thought I was doing you a favor, letting you know I'm getting married. I thought you would be all alone and miserable after your breakup with Kent. But instead, you're so happy and successful. Oh, how can you do this to me? To you? You have nothing to do with my success and happiness. Wait, you contacted me because you thought I would be miserable? And you wanted to rub it in? Just how much free time do you have? I'm super busy. I made time to contact you. But I never imagined this. Give me back what was supposed to be my happily ever story. I never received or believed your story. And I have nothing left to say to you, so goodbye. Wait. Don't be so mean to me. I'm sure there must be someone from your fiancé's company you can introduce me to. No, thank you. And you really should think about how you ask people for things. Anyhow, I'm busy. So goodbye. Hey, answer your phone. Why are you bothering me so early in the morning? I have to go to work. I'm busy. Why did you go behind my back and tell Kent everything? Oh, about that. I told him. So what? You and Kent are over. What gives you the right to contact him? Don't think you can get him back. You know women who can't let go of their past loves aren't liked by other women. I had something I wanted to tell him, so I contacted him. End of story. Then why does Kent know everything? The only plausible reason is you told him. Did you know he doesn't want to marry me anymore? It's all your fault. I thought there shouldn't be any secrets between you two since you're going to get married. And if he can't accept you as you are, maybe you two weren't meant to be together. Also, how can you complain about Kent when you're the one who wanted to trade up with my fiancé? That? I was joking. I can't believe you thought I was serious. You were joking. Then why did you ask me numerous times to introduce you to someone from my fiancé's company? It didn't sound like a joke to me. Anyhow, it was a joke, okay? So contact Kent and tell him it was all a misunderstanding. What misunderstanding? I just sent Kent screenshots of our chat. He just came to the same conclusion as me. What? Why did you have to send him screenshots of our chat? Maybe because you were being really patronizing and rude? I have my pride, you know. And Kent was special to me once. But you totally tossed him out when you thought you had a chance at a richer guy, right? But still, you went too far. Kent has blocked my number. I can't even call him. Well, his reaction is understandable. But doesn't that work out well for you as well? Just look for another wealthy man. It isn't easy finding a wealthy man. I finally found Kent and he barely met my minimum requirements. I expect you to take responsibility and fix this situation somehow. Then maybe you should give up on getting married. I can't force Kent to marry you. He has his own feelings and opinions towards you. I can't control. Why don't you find him and trick him into marrying you again? I can't do that. I already quit work because I thought I was getting married. I have given up everything. I have no cards left to play to get him back. Well, that's none of my concern. But I think you really shouldn't base your happiness on a man. And as you know, women who can't let go of their past loves aren't liked by other women. Oh, you really are infuriating. Just because you're a successful cafe owner. My life going down the toilet is really none of your concern, right? Yep, none of my concern. It's not like I have a lot of time to waste on things that don't concern me. 
And I'll have you know, the cafe wasn't always successful. In the beginning, it was hard, and I was really scared. But in a way, because of you, I realized I had nothing to lose anymore. So I overcame my fears. I really hate people who say things that just sound good. It's just noise. Lots of loud, boring, useless noise. I'm not just saying things that sound good. I'm not just making noise. But there is one thing I can say to you. Happiness is not something that's easy to acquire. Oh, if you really want to be patronizing and all, the least you can do is introduce me to a great guy or two. That's enough. You are in no position to be asking me this. You know, we used to be friends. We aren't friends anymore. I only see you as an awful woman who stole my boyfriend. I thought Kent was terrible too, but... That's right. Kent's also the bad guy here, so don't be nice to him. And Maria, there must have been something wrong with you for me to be able to steal Kent from you so easily. To be honest, I wasn't sure if I should tell Kent. It's not like I have feelings for him anymore. But we were together for a long time. And he cheated on me. But the main reason I told him was you, Holly. You were so evil. You brought out my dark side. Your dark side? You are the freaking daughter of Satan. There's no way I can win. Oh, please. You're as evil as me. But you're right. You could never beat me. Okay, I admit it. I lost. Just keep kicking me now that I'm down. You know this isn't enough. Do you know how depressed I was after you hooked up with Kent? I don't think you'll ever understand how hard it was for me. About that, I am sorry. I know it's too late and there's nothing I could do now, but... As fellow Kent victims, can't we get along? Don't lump me together with you. I have a fiancé, remember? Anyhow, why don't you try some self-reflections? Analyze why you act this way. It's popular nowadays. I can't do that. I've never done anything like that before. Then just be depressed for the rest of your life. I don't want to have anything to do with you ever again. So don't contact me. Maria, please help me. I'm no good at being alone. Read my text carefully. Don't ever contact me again. Holly went to Kent's apartment to profusely apologize, but, of course, he didn't forgive her, so the wedding was off. Holly was the type of woman who cannot exist without a man, so she started dating random men. Most of them were married, which did not end well for her. She never thought bragging about her wedding to me would lead to such a devastating outcome. It was definitely beyond what she could possibly imagine. And because I really didn't have any feelings for Kent, her efforts to rub it in my face were really all in vain. <laughs>